What does the future of piracy look like? How are things going to change over the next few years? It's, it's a difficult question to answer. We can make some assumptions. We can make some guesses. We can kind of look at the way things are taking shape. And we can kind of go, yeah, th this seems like the logical outcome. But, you know, there are always unpredictable factors when you're talking about Star Citizen. Remember, at one point, we were already supposed to have pyro, right? Like that, that was a thing. And then it wasn't. So when a game is kind of <laughs> a little all over the place in terms of what's deliverable and what's not deliverable and what is going to stay on the schedule and what isn't going to stay on the schedule, how can you predict the future? And while we can't give dates, as, you know, and CIG you know, <laughs> will often reiterate, we can't give you a date. We can just tell you that we intend to do this around this date but we're not sure that we can deliver it, the same thing we can't really give dates as to when things are, will change but we can kind of talk about how things are going to change i can't tell you when it's going to happen but i can tell you what is likely going to happen we can in a roundabout way though we can give a when because a lot of these big changes that are going to happen are going to be triggered by an event you know, let's say that, oh, all of a sudden we add in, you know, ship to ship refueling and rearming. That's going to have all these knock on effects within the game. Let's say we add in salvage tomorrow that has a knock on effect in the game. So you can say all of a sudden, oh, my God, you know, the reclaimer is actually good for something, you know, this sort of thing. So one of the big trigger events, at least in terms of piracy, one of the big changes is going to be the arrival of the pyro system. Now, how it's going to change things is largely unclear, but we can kind of make some decent guesses. Think about committing a criminal act in pyro, right? D you know, because that system isn't really under UEE control or patrolled by the UEE, does that mean that you get crime stat for committing a criminal act in the pyro system? Perhaps not. You know, that that is a possibility that that is not going to happen. Now, obviously, CIG is going to put some very valuable things in the pyro system so that people will have a reason to go there and not just pirates but you know regular law-abiding players as well bounty hunters as well we may enter into kind of a weird world where you know a lot of people kind of think that oh the second pyro arrives all the pirates are just going to go on a mass exodus into the pyro system it's possible but you know, that could change in the future. As, you know, pirates start to move into ships, you know, as they embrace their nomadic lifestyle, they're going to realize, well, I got to bring all the armor that I might need. Is it cold? Is it hot? Got to bring all the guns that I might need. Got to bring food, medical supplies, tools, all these sorts of things. Because I don't know what I'm going to be doing from one day to the next. I might have to bring a cutting tool. I might have to bring a salvage tool, tractor beam. You know, all the different possibilities, all the different unique little things that we're going to have to bring with us in order to kind of pull things off in the game. You're going to see a lot of gravitation towards, you know, longer range, more capable ships. And if, you know, if you don't want to park in Pyro, but you want to kind of dip into the system from time to time you may end up taking a ship like this and saying, you know what, now I don't really need the fastest quantum drive because maybe I'm not getting crime stat. And we'll get to that in a second, but you might start seeing people going and, you know, you're looking at your ship right now on Urkel and you're saying, wow, if I use the most efficient quantum drive, I can almost get up to over 400 million, you know, kilometers out of you know a full tank of gas rather than a hundred on a ship say corsair sized you know a medium-sized ship 
right now you really don't need that you can just kind of go with the fastest drive but in the future you might go hey you know what that actually makes sense because this means i can go from grim hex all the way to pyro get a whole bunch of stuff done in pyro and then come all the way back to grim hex and that way i can park my ship in a safe system where i can go and buy all the things that i need to buy without really having to worry about you know oh no i'm getting crime stat now i can't go to area 18. now some people probably say Oh, they'll never allow that. Oh, no, 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 no. You're going to get crime stat in Pyro. I'm telling you. You're going to get crime stat. All your, all your evil activities, you're, you're going to pay the price for. Maybe, maybe not. Um, Pyro is probably going to be pretty much off the reservation. And as much as you may enjoy the safety of the Stanton system, Pyro could very likely end up being, uh, you know, you went into pyro that what happens to you is your problem you know it could very well end up that way currently if you're a pirate in stanton you know you get marked you know we have this mark following us around in the system and we've you know we've talked about that but the truth of it is is once you get pyro maybe what you do in pyro doesn't get you marked so you have to kind of move over into this quote unquote PVP arena in order to kind of, you know, get your criminal activity on without having to worry about constantly being marked and having bounty hunters chasing you all over the place. That could be one of the ways that CIG kind of balances PVP and PVE within Star Citizen, just saying, you know, these areas are more or less you you go there, whatever happens, happens, and that's your problem. Whereas these other areas Perhaps the law system just harasses criminals to such a degree that they're largely safe. You know, that could be CIG's kind of soft version of a PVP on an off switch. You know, that could be the way things break down. I mean, certainly we've talked about, you know, the sort of even if you're doing PVE, you know, criminal missions, all of a sudden things start to get a little bit ugly for you. Pyro could end up being kind of the safe space for you to go and do those missions and go and get all those kill contracts and build up that reputation. But at the same time, you do run a higher risk, but no one's really specifically hunting you and you're not marked. So that could be quite attractive. That could be interesting. And, you know, some people say as soon as Pyro opens up, there's going to be a mass exodus. Maybe, maybe not. It really, it depends on how that ball bounces. Because if that goes to no crime stat, a lot of people might say, hey, you know what? Go with a more efficient quantum drive and just hang out at Grim Hex and just drop into Pyro whenever I need to get things done. Could be interesting. Now, some people might respond to that and say that, oh, well, you know that gate to Pyro is going to be camped. Maybe not. I have a feeling that CIG is going to kind of work something into the game to kind of prevent, you know, those gateways from being camped one way or another. They're pro I mean, that is the ultimate weakness of, you know, the jump gate system. You know, the, certainly we saw that in EVE Online for years and years and years. I'm not sure what it's like now, but I remember that back in the old days of Zero Zero Warfare, you would just camp gates to prevent anyone from getting into the system and assaulting your posses or bases or whatever. And everyone who jumped through that gate was just met with an intense lag fest. And so, you know, half your fleet would end up just getting black screened and then they would end up getting a kill mail, you know way back in the day I, I don't know if they still get kill mails in the game and they would just get a kill mail telling them oh by the way your ship was destroyed and you were potted have a nice day i don't think that cig is going to go down that road i think that cig is going to kind of come up with some magical in lore reason why weapons can't be discharged within 20 kilometers of a gate or something like that you know it's like oh no there's there's triolic waves that are escaping from the gate and it prevents weapon ignition or something like that you know some kind of bs reason and people will be able to kind of get into the system and get themselves kind of launched off to in a direction and then you know then it's open season i have a feeling that that is probably the way that ball is going to bounce so 
whether you're a legitimate you know player trying to get into pyro to do something or you're a py or a pirate trying to get back and forth i think that once you kind of hit the gate you're pretty much going to be safe and you're going to be able to get around within the system that would be my expectation now we've dealt with basic piracy um one of the big careers that i think that we're going to start to see really take off with the release of pyro is salvage we're just beginning to start to get the first increments of salvage you know the, the salvage hand tool is on its way the vulture is on its way the reclaimer has already been you know been here for a while but you know this is probably going to be one of the first big careers to really profit from pyro not just because there's going to be a bunch of static wrecks floating around in pyro that's obviously going to be a thing but maybe player created wrecks floating around in pyro are also going to be a thing and once again it's going to be player their cig is going to want players transitioning from one system to the other which is another reason why i think that that kind of gateway that you know connects the two star systems is going to be kind of like a, f a free fly zone where you're not overly concerned where people just can't stick a fleet on the gate and say no one gets through i don't think that cig is going to go down that road but there's going to be a lot of people kind of stepping into pyro and looking to salvage a lot of the wrecks that are floating around in that system and as salvage is a career that we know is coming slowly but we know that it is coming it is probably going to be very huge and very profitable in pyro not only just you know kind of the little hints that we've seen so far like you know disintegrating a ship's hull and then using it to fill in gaps and repair or sell that back to you know whatever like a refinery or whatnot that sort of thing not just that but also salvaging weapons and ship components the cutting tool getting into a ship and cutting out those you know all these components that we've invested so much time and effort into putting into ships and putting them in different locations all these things that survive are going to be worth a fair amount of money if you think about like a quantum drive a decent quantum drive can almost run you a hundred thousand credits depending on the ship that you're flying all this other stuff there's, you're going to start to see a lot of players kind of going out and saying, you know, like there's some real serious money in this career. And CIG is going to kind of want, probably use the pyro system as the big kind of leap forward for salvaging and making it a very profitable career. I don't, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that, like, you know the the profits and what people are realizing with mining just in stanton right now are probably going to be dwarfed by the profits from salvaging and mining in pyro and that's going to drive a lot of cig's interest in getting players into the pyro system even if they don't you know don't especially want to be there that you know cig is probably going to push pretty heavily to get a lot of people in there and this is going to be kind of like the bait or the lure to kind of get them to explore the pyro system that and i think that probably ruin station is going to be kind of a safe zone somewhat is in as much as grim hex is a safe zone well i'll say it that way cargo running is another thing that may blow up i don't think that cargo running is going to quite take off the way that um you know salvage and mining is going to take off but cargo running is probably going to be fairly decent if if we get to a point where players can sell to other players if we have kind of the equivalent of an auction house where you know people can put things up for sale in local areas you know we're always kind of dealing with limited availability at stations you go and you want to buy a gun but there's only three things of ammunition you know there's only three clips three magazines there and so you're just like oh man like i need more pyro is going to be a system that you, where you're going to be hard pressed to find a lot of these things in the same way that you know i kind of lament the fact that oh I, now I've got five crime stat and I want to go out and buy this gun, but I can't get it at Grim Hex and, you know, Delamar is not there. Levski is not there. So I can't just go there and see if it's there. I have limited choices. So there's probably going to be a fair amount of profit to be made in supplying players by delivering goods from one system to the other, though 
once again, that is kind of, that kind of depends on there being kind of an auction house. There may be some NPC situation that is somewhat similar, but if it really is overly profitable, then you're just going to see everybody with their brand new Hercules or their old, you know, caterpillars just loading up and just stuffing that, you know, vendor so full of goods that they're just going to be like, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good on, uh, flooring for the next 10,000 years. I don't need any more. <laughs> and so I think that the profitability of cargo hauling is going to be dependent on players being able to sell to one another you know and basically having the equivalent of an auction house there that is that would be a very good reason to put it into the game but at the same time for you know once again for cargo running to work you would have to have something like that because you know pyro is a dead system you know it's a system that's been entirely used up um the ue has largely abandoned it that's why you know criminals have kind of moved in there so I don't think that, you know, there's going to be enough industry kind of holding over the, over there to, you know, make, you know, commercial cargo runs profitable. It's going to be more along the lines of not quite smuggling because you're not delivering, quote unquote, illegal goods. But, you know, basically cargo running is not going to be as good as or at least as stable as it's going to be in terms of profitability in the Stanton system. But smuggling could get interesting. Now, oftentimes, you know, when people talk about when were the best patches since 3.0 came out, a lot of people tend to say, you know, Jump Town. When Jump Town was popping, that was one of the best times in recent memory in Star Citizen. And I fully agree with that statement. Smuggling is probably going to make a comeback in Pyro. And I think that a lot of the drug labs that we currently have in Stanton are probably going to be going adios. If you really think about it, I mean, all the major drug labs in Stanton, everybody knows where they are. Everybody knows what they're called. And it's just like, but law enforcement does nothing. What you're probably going to see, and you know, in terms of profitability in terms of delivering drugs is that you're probably going to get drug labs and kind of like smuggling 2.0 in with the release of pyro and most of the drug labs are going to be in the pyro system but the supplies that they need or at least some of the items that they need in order to make the drugs can only be sourced in stanton you know legitimately and so the new drug run like right now you go you pick up a crate, you deliver it to another place, and you pick up another crate, and you deliver it to another place, and then you deliver it like a little packet to Grim Hex. And it's kind of a joke because it's like, I brought an entire starship for this. You know, this is all the smuggling that I do. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's just something I can keep in my pocket. When we start talking about high volume and perhaps high profitability, but running a pretty high risk, especially in a ship like, you know, the Mercury Star Runner you're really going to see it come to uh, into its own as far as smuggling goes with the arrival of pyro and you're going to start seeing those kind of high volume moves but be aware that the police in stanton are probably going to be looking for you pretty actively you know cig talked recently about this new scanning system and uh you know scanning a ship to see its contents and of course that's all in a very basic and all in a very beginner stage it hasn't really been put together yet but chances are you know a ship like the mercury star runner that's fast 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 you're going to be kind of trying to get through the gateway and get away before the police can really scan your ship and they might kind of come after you saying hey wait a minute i gotta look inside the trunk of your car sir and you're like no no nothing to see here and you're just going to be getting right the hell out of there and quantuming away as quickly as you can and hopefully getting to your destination before old Johnny Law can, you know, catch up to you. That's probably when you're going to see proper smuggling in, you know, in the Star Citizen universe. Data running on the illegal side, definitely. And that will probably help out the Mercury Star Runner and, you know, the woeful the woefully neglected herald 
Um, but yeah, the, I think that really when when we get Pyro, we're going to see Smuggling 2.0. And that is where that's when we're going to get back to the good old days of jump town. So pretty much that is kind of how I see pyro changing the game. Um, you know, a lot of that is kind of broad strokes, how I think things are going to shift. But if you're kind of holding on to a salvage vessel, I definitely think that you're going to see some, some pretty decent rewards out of that in the future. But it's going to be a while before we get Pyro. Because I think that what we're experiencing right now, which is the incremental growth of the Stanton system, I think that what CIG is going to do with Pyro is that they are going to deliver Pyro more or less as a done deal. Pyro is going to end up being a... A finished and delivered article or far more than Stanton ever was you know we're going to get a whole bunch of content dropped all at once and that's going to be kind of CIG showing us you know yeah you know Stanton took a long time to nail down but at the same time with Pyro since we learned all these lessons we're able to deliver all that much more you know all that much more quickly so i think that that is going to be more or less how that ball bounces i may be wrong it's possible but i think that more or less that is going to be what we see uh with the release of the pyro system the only real big question for me is uh when <laughs> anyways that's the show for today i hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching sorry if it's a little bit late it's been a busy day Thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 43's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.